Joining us on the program right now, the head of the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs, member of the NRA's Board of Directors, Mr. Scott Box. Scott, how are you, sir? Hey, Cam. I have a smile on my face today. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> I, you know, like, really, how many times have we talked where it's been, you know, oh, Scott, I wish we could talk about something good. Uh, now we actually can. Governor Christie uh, vetoing some of the worst uh, gun control bills in the state of New Jersey on Friday. Absolutely, Cam. This is actually huge, okay? It is unprecedented for a New Jersey governor of any party to take a stand like the governor of New Jersey took last Friday. And what I mean specifically by that is the 50 caliber ban is now dead, okay? Mm -hmm. The horrific firearms ID bill that would have suspended Second Amendment rights unless you had training and put your your um, status as a gun owner on your driver's license, dead. That was the centerpiece, so-called centerpiece of the Democrats' agenda, which they touted, um, you know, as a national model. That is dead. Uh, a bill that would have um, disclosed confidential trace data uh, for misuse by anti-gunners, dead. Um, I cannot stress how monumental this is. I mean, if you take a look at what happened over the last seven months, New York State fell in the middle of the night in a, in a huge steamroll. Um, Connecticut, you know, all the gun bills passed. Colorado, mm -hmm. the gun bills passed. New Jersey, well, we're still standing proud in New Jersey. And there's a lot of people to thank, uh, starting with the governor, but, but ending with the members and gun owners in the state who have put up an incredible, sustained campaign for seven months of relentless battle, um, who just wouldn't give up, uh, you know, to the very end. And, um, you know, I'm not saying it's all sunshine and roses in the Garden State. Uh, the governor did sign some bills that troubled us. Right. But these were the top worst bills. These are the bills that we have... Let's say it's been the centerpiece of our agenda to kill these bills. And, uh, you know, it's pretty remarkable. A few months ago, the governor had made noises like he might actually sign a certain kind of 50 caliber ban. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he vetoed this one uh, because this one, you know, was much broader than what he had been talking about. And, you know, whatever the reason, it's dead. Now, um, Interestingly, the governor used a technique that he has available to him called a conditional veto for the firearms ID card bill. And conditional veto basically means the bill is dead unless the legislature reconvenes to resurrect it in accordance with the dictates of the governor. So the governor basically on that, that um, firearms ID card bill basically said, well, if you want this bill to survive, You've got to strip out a whole bunch of things, and all of those things are the things we've been complaining about for months and months and months. So um, there can be no doubt that the voice of gun owners was heard. Um, you know, there's, you know the, the interesting thing is I got a bunch of emails from members who are saying, well, I guess this confirms the governor's running for president. <laughs> um, and whether it does or doesn't, the, you know, the bottom line is, you know, we were dealt a certain hand. We played it. And this is the outcome. Um, the antis are beside themselves. They, weren't, they didn't see this coming on 50 cal. I mean, they've been trying to pass that for seven years. We've managed to defeat it each time. This is the closest it's ever come. I mean, it came within a hair's breadth. Uh, but um, it's, you know, gun owners are, they're, we're so used to, you know, bracing for the next impact. You know, some of us don't know what to do. Right. No. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and so I, I, I want to ask, Scott, because, as you say, you know, Governor Christie had indicated that uh, he might be uh, on board uh, with, a, with, 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 with a 50 caliber ban. But as you said, this one went too far for him. I'm curious, you know, do you think uh, we were seeing some politics here? Uh, you know, a lot of folks are talking about Governor Christie uh, possibly running in 2016 was this were, were, was there some you know politics okay here's here's the ones that I find acceptable here's the ones that aren't this is what might play well this is what I can get away with or 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 was this a decision you think uh, on the part of the governor's office where this really just went too far 
I think it's a little bit of both, quite honestly. I mean, look, it's not a secret or an accident, you know, that, that um, you know, we know that the governor has national ambitions. Um, the governor's office has been listening to ANJRPC and NRA quietly behind the scenes quite intently. And we've made all kinds of points to the governor's office, including, obviously, the substance of these bills, why these bills are bad and needed to die, but also, the, you know, the practical implications, you know, pointing out that, you know, any politician that supports a gun ban is telegraphing that they don't get the issue. You know, I mean, as we've talked about many times, Cam, you know, the notion that, if, that we will somehow be safer if we just remove this one tool from society is just phony. You know, if that were true, you know, if, if uh, as I've said many times, you know, if, if box cutters could bring down the World Trade Center, does anybody really think that banning box cutters is going to stop the next terrorist? And the same thing is true with firearms. So any politician that passes a gun ban, you know, where that leads is if one tool is going to make us safer, then banning the next one and the next one and the next one will. And that leads to a complete ban on guns. Mm -hmm. And we made sure to point that out. We made sure to say, you know, if you take this position now, you might have to explain that or backpedal from it in a couple of years. And, you know, if you want to be the leader of the free world, do you really want to be in the position or do you want to take a stand now? I mean, you know, we didn't put it quite so bluntly, but um, we made sure our position was heard from many, many perspectives. You know, I mean, the other thing is we were gun owners worked so hard through this year to deliver a bill where we could say to the governor, no Republican in the Senate or Assembly voted for the 50 caliber ban or for that firearms ID card bill. Do you want to be the only Republican in the state voting for it? Right. You know, I mean, it was a, it was honestly, there has been a tremendous amount of quiet, hard work that I can only begin to speak about now. Mm -hmm. But every tool, every argument, every angle, uh, every suggestion, um, you know, was put on the table. And um, ultimately, uh, you know, this is the result of hard work from thousands of people who just didn't give up. Um, bottom line, that was the hand we had, and we played it to the max, and, and here's where we are. And it's, uh, you know, it, we don't, we're not used to pausing, you know, for victory, but <laughs> this is very significant. And, you know, it's still anticlimactic even to me. Uh, you, know, I've, you know, it's been nonstop for seven months. Right. But, um, we are taking a breather. The fight is going to go on. Uh, the scariest words of the anti-gunners throughout this last seven months in every hearing has been, this is only the beginning. These are only the beginning of their bills. So, you know, we're going to be cranking up. But what this also telegraphs to them, Cam, is that, you know, the governor's going to get tough on gun criminals, but if there are bogus bills that just go after the good guys, mm -hmm. he's not going to stand for that. And that's really the message here. What do you think, uh, how, how does this change the debate going forward in New Jersey, Scott? Well, I think for, uh, you know, the hardcore antis, I don't think it does change the debate. I mean, look, the governor's taking a beating over this in the press, the anti-gunners, uh, both in the legislature and uh, in uh, the, you know, their cronies and the anti-gun groups are are hammering him. I think what it should do and what we're going to try to amplify is, you know, that if you really want to impact societal problems, if you want to stop a tragedy or if you want to stop criminal behavior with guns, you have to take targeted solutions. You can't blame honest gun owners for the acts of criminals and madmen. And if you do, you're going to lose. I mean, just think about this for a second. The Senate president in New Jersey who was formerly very highly regarded, okay, by gun owners, has just blown his relationship with gun owners, and his centerpiece bill has been torn to shreds. If he wants to resurrect it, he has to swallow the conditions put by the governor on it. So they're going to think twice, and maybe they will listen a little more carefully when we continue to shout, go after the bad guys, and we'll get behind it, but leave us the heck alone. So, absolutely. Well, listen, Scott. Again, congratulations, and congratulations to all of the gun owners in New Jersey who, who made this possible. As you say, this is this is a huge deal. You, you know, um, at, at the beginning of this 
legislative fight, when the gun control forces uh, were, were tabulating where they thought their victories would come, uh, they were looking at New York. They were looking at Connecticut. They were looking at California. They were looking at New Jersey. Uh, and, you know, they were, they were looking at uh, Colorado. And I got to tell you, Scott, it's fascinating to me that Colorado passed more restrictive gun control laws this session than the state of New Jersey. And I don't think it's any coincidence that you have lawmakers in Colorado who push those gun control bills who are now facing recalls in that state. Exactly. I think you are right. And I think that will also change the debate to a certain extent. We have every seat in the state house up in November. So, you know, unfortunately, it's a very liberal state. So a lot of uh, some of the worst foes of gun rights may get reelected. Um, so, um, look, the fight's going to continue, but this should be a message to everyone everywhere. If we can stop at the freight train in New Jersey, okay, it should hearten everybody. But, you know, I mean, New Jersey should have been the easiest place for them to do this, Absolutely. Okay, given how liberal the state is. And it wasn't. And that should encourage everyone everywhere. And uh, we can't thank you and the show enough for your support over these months, Cam, and spreading the word. So. Well, listen, that's what we're here for, Scott. We'll keep doing it, and thank you uh, for coming on the program whenever we needed you to and, uh, and for helping to get the word out. So we will uh, keep moving forward, but, again, congratulations, uh, Garden State Sanity. <laughs> Every now and then it's possible to see some. Thanks so much, Cam. Thank you, Scott. Scott Bach, Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs, uh, Executive Director, member of the NRA's Board of Directors as well.